San Antonio starts right now. Hi, good morning. Happy Thursday. It is May 13th. It is. Have you ever heard of Comfort Camp Cafe here in San Antonio? I didn't. We actually did a story on it, too. Yeah, yeah. I had not heard of it, but believe it or not, Comfort Cafe, Comfort Comfort Cafe. <laughs> Why can't I say that? Number one on the new Yelp Top 100 Places to Eat in Texas. As a matter of fact, one of seven mm -hmm. Alamo City restaurants to make the list. Yeah, very impressive. Uh, the other one making the top five is Gino's Deli Stop and Buy. Mm -hmm. Also on the list, and here they are, number 21, Nelson's Barbecue. And we have 37, Outlaw Kitchens. 47, Pollos Asados Los Norteños. I think that's the one on Rigsby. And then we have at number 68, Time for Lunch. Time for Lunch. Number 100 is Papa's Burgers. So we were number one and we rounded out the list here in San Antonio. But if Comfort Cafe sounds familiar to you, mm -hmm. our Japanese Gray was there yes. recently and that's what we're seeing the video from right now. Yeah, the video shows that uh, Comfort Cafe, her story showed it had a unique history and operates as a re residential recovery center at as well as a restaurant right there in, right inside Loop 410 on Bandera Road. I was joking around with some of my coworkers saying that I need to venture out more. Usually I don't go anywhere outside of four, Loop 410, but right. this is actually right inside Loop 410. Well, there you go. <laughs> and you were right about Pollos uh, Asados Los Norteños. That's at 4642 mm -hmm. Rigsby Avenue. But congratulations to all seven restaurants making the Yelp Top 100 Texas Places to Eat yeah, list. Yeah, congratulations. And then again, if you want to take a look, look at the list again, it's on our website at kset.com. Check it out. Let's look at today's nine at nine. 12 to 15 year olds will be able to get Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine today. The CDC recommends teens get the shot along with other routine vaccinations. Fighting between Palestinian and Israeli forces continues this morning. Gaza's health ministry says 69 Palestinians, including 16 children, have died. At least seven people have been killed in Israel, including a six-year-old child. Here at home, an overnight fire has destroyed the grill in Leon Springs. The building once housed the very first macaroni grill in the U.S. The cause of the fire is still under investigation. Colonial Pipeline restarted its operations last night following a six-day shutdown caused by a cyber attack. Officials say it will take several days for service to get back to normal. President Biden signed an executive order aimed at better protecting the U.S. from cyber attacks. The order would require new standards on software but is limited to products and companies used by the federal government. Live Oak police officers arrested a Dallas man wanted for murder. Investigators were tipped off about where Salvador Rubio was and later confirmed that his family was helping him hide in the area. Reports of sexual assaults in the U.S. military increased by only about 1% in 2020. This comes during a year when troops were largely locked down amid the pandemic. Republicans will hold a forum today for potential replacements for Representative Liz Cheney. She was removed as House GOP conference chair yesterday after she continued to criticize former President Donald Trump. Tesla CEO Elon Musk announced you can't buy his electric vehicles with Bitcoin anymore. He says it's because of how the cryptocurrency is, quote, rapidly increasing use of fossil fuels for Bitcoin mining and transactions, especially coal, end quote. And that is today's Nine at Nine. Katie Blake is in for Justin Horn today. Let's go ahead and check in with her about this beautiful weather outside. It is so comfortable outside. This is a treat for us here uh, approaching the middle of May. We do have a good amount of clouds out there this morning and we'll continue to see that cloud cover filter in and out throughout the day, but it's going to stay comfortable all day long. Temperatures in the low 60s now. Check out the wind direction north northeast that has pulled in some slightly drier air, so humidity is on the lower side. It'll stay that way throughout the day, so again, very comfortable Thursday coming your way in today's pollen count. Everything is mold today. Um, everything is mold today. Everything is low today, including mold and pecan. We've got a couple more nice days, but by the weekend, chances of showers and thunderstorms do return to the forecast. We'll talk about that coming up here in just a bit. Guys, back to you. And right now we're taking a look at Transkai 410 at Culebra. The flag is flying. We've got a few clouds out there. The roads are dry. And look at all the green grass out at 1604 and Bandera Road on the northwest side. 
top stories we are following today. Fire investigators are trying to determine what sparked a massive fire that destroyed a popular restaurant in northwest Bear County. We've been tracking the story all morning long here on GMSA. The grill at Leon Springs near I-10 and Bernie Stage now considered a total loss. The fire broke out just before one this morning. When crews got there, they found flames shooting out of the rooftop. Took them at least uh, half an hour, if not more, to get that fire under control. This restaurant has a long-standing history with the community and has been a favorite for, um, since, for some San Antonio Spurs. It also opened its door as the original Macaroni Grill back in 1988. We'll continue to follow that story all day right here at KSAT and KSAT.com. San Antonio Police and Crime Stoppers are once again looking for your help tracking down a murder suspect. The murder happened earlier this month on May 6, police showed up to Palmetto Way on the far west side near Culebra Road and found 24 year old Saifedean Saleh shot and killed. All police have to go on in this case are surveillance photos of a car seen leaving the area. All right, so take a look at your screen. If you've seen this car, it's a gray Nissan Altima with a discoloration on the hood. Call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. There is up to a $5,000 reward for information that leads to an arrest in the case. This morning, the Bear County Sheriff's Office is hosting its annual Fallen Deputy Memorial. BCSO will honor deputies who paid the uh, or made the ultimate sacrifice while serving in the line of duty. This is a live look at the ceremony happening virtually this year due to the pandemic. Later this morning, an SAPD helicopter will do a flyover and the BCSO Honor Guard will fire three volleys. You can watch the live stream of the ceremony live on BCSO's Facebook page. The San Antonio Salvation Army is hosting a phone bank today. Each donation helps ensure the nonprofit can continue their mission to serve our community. And if you would like to make a donation, you can call 210-598-7921. The phone lines are open right now until 7 tonight. You can find more information about it on ksatcommunity.com. They would appreciate your help. And your other morning headlines, more video from that Capitol riot. And two planes collide midair. Believe it or not, no one was killed. Several injuries after a balcony collapsed and a mountain lion where you don't normally see a mountain lion. David Sears is here to explain all of this. Well, where did they find it, David? If you were looking at your door okay. and you would you like freak out if you saw a mountain lion outside your yeah, front door? Yeah, a little bit. I think so. Yeah, okay. especially you here in town, right? <laughs> Yeah, of course. <laughs> You're like, I'm over by Woodlawn Lake. and <laughs> Yeah, why, right, why are these so lions roaming around the lake? Might be the same as some of these other folks. Okay. Right. We'll get to that in just a second. But first, more video from a body cam worn by a D.C. Metro police officer during that attack on the Capitol back on January 6th. You are with Officer Michael Fanone. This video is when Fanone was outside the Capitol trying to hold off attackers. You can hear someone say, I got one. He ended up getting into a pretty physical scuffle. They were grabbing him and holding on to him. Fanon said publicly that someone even tried to get his gun. He pleaded with him to let him go. You can hear some of the attackers yell out, don't hurt him. We are better than this. Fanon tries pleading to their more human side, telling them he's got kids. Yeah, his partner eventually got to him and with the help of some of those who were on the steps and didn't want to get him hurt. He was able to escape the mob. He did suffer a concussion. Another video from his body cam shows him inside the Capitol trying to hold off the crowd, keep them from crashing through the door. Gas shortages on the East Coast last week. held so prices jumping six tenths of a percent. At least the unemployment benefit numbers are a little better today. 473,000 people asked for unemployment benefits last week. That is down about 34,000 from the week before. That number coming off that week jobs report of 266,000 from last month. By the way, that pipeline company, as we told you just a few minutes ago, supplies about 40% of the fuel to the East Coast. is back up and running. It'll take a few days, though, to get it to normal. All right, let's Talk about lucky to be alive. That is a plane coming down to the ground softly. You can see the parachute in the plane right there. That's one of those new fangled technology things. There's the plane being hauled off. Two souls on board, both okay. The plane had engine problems. That caused a mid-air collision with this plane. You can see coming up here in just a second, there's a big chunk of this plane missing. We're still looking at the plane on the ground right there near the neighborhood. Fortunately, the plane on the passenger plane was a cargo carrier. And that one only had the two folks. So one of the big fears of the plane collision, planes and parts fall into the neighborhood. However, Howard Miller's that other plane for you. You can see the big chunk missing at the back of that plane. That's that cargo plane. So there were no passengers on board, just pilot and co-pilot. 
Howard Miller lives in the neighborhood. He witnessed the plane coming down, which according to an aviation expert was pretty incredible. The concern is that a plane will actually hit the house or hit someone's house um, around here. To be able to uh, confidently get the airplane back on the ground, uh, they just had incredible skill. Look at the chunk of that thing missing. And then there's the one that uh, came down with the parachute. Tyler was talking about the cargo plane that landed. The NTSB and the FAA is investigating this midair collision. All right, let's take it to Malibu, California. Group of people on the balcony having a party. Now you see them. Now you don't. That balcony just collapsed. It was right under them. It went right down to the beach. The owner of the home rented it out to some people. She thought she rented it to six people. Ended up being about 30 on that balcony. Two people were critically injured. Several others also suffered injuries. There are now lawyers involved. You know what that means? Lawsuits. The fire department also said the house is now uninhabitable. The owner says not only that, but the house has been vandalized. All right, that is a ring doorbell camera shot Meow. of that cat right there. <laughs> and that's not just a little cat. That is a mountain lion. Meow. And that's just a neighborhood in Wichita, Kansas. Chris Boyle was shocked when she saw the big cat roaming around. You could even hear it. I played it and I had to look at it and think to myself, is that in my alley? Oh, man, Kansas Parks and Wildlife was a little skeptical at first, but Matt Peake said there is no doubt what it was. Only the 36th confirmed sighting in the state of Kansas and the first in a city. So that's what I was talking about. Would you, what, would you, what would you, you do if you, you saw it outside your door? You don't, you think, oh you think Jay Jayhawks, you don't think mountain lions, <laughs> right? <laughs> Kansas, no. yeah, but... I would be terrified. Unfortunately, I probably would freeze and do nothing, and then that would be, you know, terrible. <laughs> At least it was the ring camera video. Yes. So she saw it later after it already passed by. But and then the you wonder, audio, okay, where to go? I know. The audio makes it scary yeah. as well. Uh, Next thing you know, we're going to spot this one in West Houston. <laughs> Thank you, David. Right now, about 9, 10, 63 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at 9. The Vera County Clerk's Office making sure history is being preserved. How you can access the Spanish archives for free. According to a new report in the Texas Tribune, state officials knew children were being illegally housed in an unlicensed facility, but did not notify the court. Alana Rocher from the Trib will join us later on GMSA at 9 with what happened there. Good morning. Well, you can save big without having to sacrifice on quality. A local nonprofit hardware store is offering big discounts because it's National Home Improvement Month. We have all the details just ahead here on GMSA. And welcome back. It's about 914. If you're wanting to start or finish some home improvement projects around your home and backyard, this month might be the perfect time. May is National Home Improvement Month and places like the Habitat Home Center are celebrating with discounts on the items you'll need. Alicia Barrera visited their main location just south of downtown and is more on saving big while giving back to the community. Grab a cart and be ready to save some cash. Folks can see anywhere from 50 to 70% savings in some of our products without skimping on quality. We actually purchase uh, merchandise from liquidators and wholesalers. So not a lot of the um, things are just donated. They're actually, most of the stuff is new items. So we have all types of nails that we got, um, like this is roofing nails and you got galvanized. Sarah Arredondo is the marketing associate for Habitat Home Center's three San Antonio locations. We are a nonprofit home improvement store. We we sell a bunch of different things like flooring and doors and area rugs and paint. So it's a great option and low cost option. Whether it's paint touch ups or an entire home renovation you're wanting to tackle. We do have some shingles. So in case a shingle has been blown away or maybe some slight hail damage. Chances are you'll find the items you need cheaper than at your regular hardware store. We have five gallon paint in semi gloss. It runs from $49.99 and you might see that somewhere else for maybe 100, maybe a little bit more. Your A grade products will not only increase the value of your home, they also help local families in the home building program at Habitat for Humanity. We have a lot of families in the San Antonio community that need affordable housing. And so uh, we're able to provide that for them with the proceeds that come in from the sales of the store. So they are directly impacting those families that need affordable homes. And if you want items with more character, be sure to check out the selection of donated items in the store or on their social media page. 
Well, I have a list here of what items are discounted for National Home Improvement Month here at this center. And just so you get an idea, shingles, we saw those $17. Windows are $69.99. Toilets are $10 off. What about cherry cabinets? Are you looking for those? Well, those are 10% off. And there's much, much more items available with a discount. There are three centers throughout San Antonio. And on KSAT.com, we have a link with those locations as well as hours of operation. Mark, Steph, back to you. Sounds like Thank a you. bargain considering yes. how much construction materials, the prices mm -hmm. have skyrocketed as of late. Thank you, Alicia. Especially right now. I mean, mm -hmm. I was just telling you that the, the store it looks huge. Uh, mm -hmm. I used to know of one by my mom's house. Uh, it was a Habitat store. It was a lot smaller. So just looking at the video, I was like, oh, wow. So lots of options for people right now. That's a good thing. All right, let's check it with Katie Blake now. And uh, we still have rain in the forecast. Uh -huh. Could wind up being another uh, dicey situation, what, late next uh, weekend, the weekend and into next week? Uh, a little bit on Sunday, mainly for areas west of 35. But then as we get into Monday, Tuesday of next week, potentially... Uh, a few more severe storms rumbling across South Texas. We'll get you ready for that. But we've got a couple of nice days coming up out there right now. It is cloudy. As I mentioned, the clouds will filter in and out today. So I expect you'll see a little bit of sunshine today, especially as we get past lunchtime. 63 now. Dew point is in the 50s. Uh, so humidity is on the lower side. So today is going to be a really comfortable day. Maybe not a ton of sunshine, but it'll feel pretty nice out there. Tomorrow also nice, but starting to feel a lot more humid, especially late in the day Friday and then by this weekend it will be muggy with scattered showers and storms back in the forecast. So a brief break from the rain yesterday through the end of this work week. So 63 at the airport now we've got 50s in the hill country 66 in Del Rio. Very comfortable out there. Humidity is on the lower side for everyone. Pretty much everyone has dew points in the 50s. So as we head into this afternoon, here's how things will play out partly to mostly cloudy skies. I do think we'll start to see a little bit more sunshine as we get into the afternoon. A lot of us We'll see our temperatures this afternoon top out mid to upper 70s with some low 80s along and south of Highway 90. Overall, really, really pleasant for this time of year. Here are our dew points in the 50s for most of us. A few low 60s down closer to the coast. But uh, again, these numbers keep it feeling really nice out there, not overly muggy. Now, by tomorrow, these numbers will start to climb. And as we get into the weekend, our dew points are going to be pushing 70 degrees. That's when it starts to feel just oppressively muggy out there. But that moisture, uh, moisture, moisture is going to come paired with some better rain making energy as we get into the weekend. This will begin Saturday. We have these little pieces of orange and red here. These are little pieces of upper level energy or lift, and we need this to make rain chances. Notice we've got some of these disturbances moving through Saturday into Sunday, so that's when our chances of showers and storms will kick in. However, as we get into early next week, Monday into Tuesday, this much larger piece of rain making energy, it's actually a cutoff low pressure system. This is much more organized energy. It's going to start to inch closer to us early next week. And that's when our chances for some severe storms will kick in. So as we get into the weekend, scattered showers and storms will be around. However, we expect the severe weather potential to hold off until early in the week next week, beginning Monday, continuing into Tuesday. Now this weekend, you certainly will hear some rumbles of thunder and there may be a couple of strong storms, primarily on Sunday west of 35, but any really organized severe weather activity again, holding off until early next week. I do want to get you a quick look at your weekend and future cast mainly to point out that it's not going to be raining all day Saturday and all day Sunday. We'll get some breaks, but it's likely going to feel pretty soggy and damp out there for much of the weekend. Again, through Sunday, these areas of showers and storms rumbling on through some folks. I think through the end of the weekend could start to close in on nearly an inch of rain and then we'll add to that early middle part of next week. So some more beneficial rain coming, but we will have to watch for maybe some potential flash flooding issues by early next week and also that potential for severe weather today. No worries. Enjoy it up to near 77 this afternoon, depending on how much we clear out. If we hold on to some clouds, maybe a couple of degrees below that, but overall really comfortable, mostly cloudy, but still fairly pleasant Friday as well. As we get into the weekend, few strong storms possible, especially Sunday, some pockets of heavy rain, but it's early next week, Monday into Tuesday that we could see some more organized uh, severe weather. We'll continue to keep you updated over the next few days. Next half hour, we've got our new drought monitor in.
I'll show you that coming up in just a bit, guys. Thank you, Katie. Just about 921. And still ahead on GMSA at 9, did you know you can unlock your family history for free at the Barra County Spanish Archives? Erica Hernandez will join us to explain after the break. And welcome back, it's 924. Earlier this morning, we told you about the Bear County Spanish Archives and what is being done to preserve them. Erica Hernandez joins us now to talk more about that. Erica, tell us more about some of these documents, what they are, and how we can get access to them. Hey guys, good morning. Well, the Spanish Archives is an amazing resource for students, educators, and the community to find out about the county's history as well as their own family genealogy. The records contain land grants, property records, maps, and just so much more, and it's all free to access. Here's a little more about those records and why historians and researchers are excited about the collection. If you take time to just come down here, it's free. I mean, this is your history. This is not mine. I'm the county clerk custodian of the records, and I'm making sure that I preserve this beautiful historical information that belongs to you, the people. If you need help figuring out your family tree or wanting to know if you had ancestors in the area, the Spanish Archives downtown can help you dig into your history. It is very important and imperative that you get involved in your history because once you find out your history, it just gives you this strength and empowerment. And I want to continue that to the younger generation. So come and see our records. These records also becoming a valuable tool for historians and researchers. It gives us a tremendous excitement because we know we'll be able to harvest all that valuable uh, material. Plus, uh, our society, our communities, not just San Antonio, but really anywhere that people were connected uh, to coming to the new world or new Spain or Texas. This all provides everyone with a better understanding of the Hano history and making sure the facts are told. Uh, as we be begin to understand our identity, uh, understand that our ancestors uh, contributed and were important parts of Texas history, uh, will will you know really deepen and give us pride uh, in our own families and our ancestors and ultimately our society will be much much stronger for that information. Now right now you can make an appointment to go visit the Spanish Archives which is downtown right across the street from the Bear County Courthouse and archivists there will be able to help you with whatever information you are looking for. Now Mark Steph, this place is truly just a hidden gem and it's just so much more than Bear County. It expands throughout Texas because at one point Bear County was not what it is now. It was huge. So it goes all the way into Texas and beyond. So of course we have a lot more on our website. You said hidden gem. I'm, we, didn't, we didn't know about it. I, I sure didn't and I'm glad yeah. that it's going to be more more accessible for more people to yeah and it's going to be digitized so everything will soon be online within the next year fantastic thank you erica Thanks, appreciate guys. it there is more ahead on gmsa at nine another tough tough loss for our san antonio spurs that was against the nets last night david and rj are going to be here to break my heart about it Later this morning on GMSA at 9 a.m. in today's teacher spotlight, we are going to introduce you to a teacher here on the south side who lived in South Korea and is taking what he learned and now teaching students here. A small town two hours east of Dallas doubled its COVID-19 vaccination rate in about a month. Alana Rocha with the Texas Tribune will explain how people there got the numbers up that high in such a short time frame. New on the Texas Tribune, according to a report published this morning, some Texas officials, including those in the governor's office, knew that for months that foster children were illegally placed in an unsafe shelter. And there's a small town here in Texas that has doubled its vaccination rate in a month. Alana Rocha with the Texas Tribune joins us now with more on how this community just two hours east of Dallas was able to pull that off. Good morning, Alana. Good morning. Alana, let's start with the story about foster children being illegally placed in an unsafe shelter. The Trib writes that Texas officials were aware for months. However, this did not stop until a whistleblower came forward. What did you guys find? And this is dating back to September when state health officials flagged the Whataburger Center uh, there in uh, San Antonio for uh, a series of violations related to abuse and neglect of children. Uh, that was September, October. Uh, we learned uh, last month when a governor official or official in the governor's office testified under oath that they learned about it in October, uh, the conditions and the situation there. Uh, and yet uh, nothing was reported as required uh, by a court order to court appointed watchdogs. Uh, and it wasn't until a whistleblower came forward in March that these kids uh, were moved out. 
So it's a series of months uh, that these kids were still uh, placed in unsafe conditions. Um, you know, we didn't get a comment uh, in response to our request from the governor's office and state health officials cited the pending litigation as to why they could not comment. All right. Well, Alana, U.S. Representative Chip Roy is reportedly considering a bid to replace Liz Cheney as the new GOP conference chair. What do we know? Yeah, well, the vote's tomorrow, so not a lot of time to drum up support. But, uh, you know, this was first reported by the Daily Caller. And in a statement from Roy's office, uh, a spokesperson said that the uh, representative is focused on representing the 21st Congressional District, uh, which stretches from Austin into the Hill Country, um, and not on a leadership role. But he thinks that, uh, you know, the contest or, or the race to replace uh, Liz Cheney should be a contest and not a coronation. He's referencing his, um, you know, lukewarm support, if you will, or lack of support for a Representative uh, Elise Stefanik, a uh, Republican from New York who, uh, you know, has a more moderate uh, voting record than Cheney did, but she's a staunch supporter of the former president and received his endorsement. So she's all but certain to be, uh, you know, in that position come the end of the week. A lot of Mount Pleasant, a uh, small town in northeast Texas, about two hours east of the Metroplex, doubled its COVID vaccination rate in a month. This is the state's rate decline. And while the town still lags behind the state in its vaccination rate, what are they doing out there? to get those numbers up in such a short time frame. We have to understand the demographics of this area at Titus County where Mount Pleasant is. It's 40% Hispanic, a, a demographic, a population that's been hesitant to get the vaccine. Um, and so they're, they're going to trusted sources in that uh, churches, nonprofits, and state health officials have put uh, different uh, Latinos of different descents uh, in the clinic. So people from uh, Puerto Rican descent, Honduras, Mexico. So when people coming in from this community uh, you know, go to get their vaccine. They see people from their communities uh, who can vouch for the safety of the vaccine and, uh, you know, being able to trust to get it. They're also taking it to them. And of course, the supply of the vaccine has increased, uh, which was, you know, kind of tough in the beginning for rural areas to get uh, adequate supply. It just made things easier. All right. Alana Rocha with the Texas Tribune. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Taking a look outside with live cam. I am happy that we are still in the 60s right now, no, Katie. Oh, I know. Uh, we'll have to see how much these clouds can filter out today. If they do, we could easily jump into the upper 70s with some low 80s south of Highway 90. Uh, but if the clouds hang on a little bit more, it'll stay cool today. Definitely unseasonably cool for this time of year, so enjoy it. Low temperatures today right at 60 at the airport. Some upper 50s in the hill country as we were several degrees below average for this time of year and we haven't warmed up a whole lot because of the clouds 63 in San Antonio 64 in Gonzales 67 down in Pleasanton this afternoon uh, we're looking at those clouds filtering in and out throughout the day overall though very comfortable northeast winds 5 to 15 miles per hour so a nice little breeze at times today and that northeasterly wind direction will help to keep humidity on the lower side it'll start to feel more muggy by the end of the day Friday and that leads us into weekend rain chances more on that coming up in just a bit guys. Thank you, Ms. Blake. Let's check Transguide real quick. Uh, 410 at Fredericksburg looks great. So does 37 at Jones Avenue. Okay, the Spurs will have to wait a bit longer to get a play-in spot after a loss to the Nets in Brooklyn. David and Archie here to talk about this latest mm -hmm. loss for the Silver and Black and what it means for their playoff chances. All right, first, Man. let's clear something up, Steph. Uh -huh. <laughs> a win is a win. Yes. But one win does not a season make. Okay, I'll give you that. But a win still a win. It's very philosophical <laughs> when they win this again. morning. <laughs> well, on this, but unfortunately, but the Spurs need a win. There was not a win last night. Yeah. They just need one win. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, look, I mean, we can. We'll talk about this game here. The Spurs apparently uh, left their offense here at home because uh, <laughs> playing in Brooklyn, of course, against a, a good Brooklyn team, but at the same time, uh, playing without Kyrie Irving, we knew that. And James Harden didn't even start this game. That was the best shot of the night, right that there. That was DeMar. nice from Demar. Yeah. Demar scored 21. He did his thing, but. Um, I, the other yeah. guys definitely struggled throughout the night. And uh, there's a nice block from Jacob for a minute there. They yeah, had the New Jersey good. uniforms, but Brooklyn ends up coming out and being the Spurs yeah. here. Um, they went on a 13 0 run in the first quarter mm -hmm. and got up. And the Spurs actually cut it. That was like 42 41 mm -hmm. New Jersey. And then all of a sudden, New Jersey. I'm calling them, yeah, Brooklyn. Uh, right. And well, then, they're wearing uh, the old New Jersey Nets, Nets uniforms. So, yeah, that's what you're going to call them then. They shouldn't have done that if they didn't want me to call them New Jersey. 
And then um, the Nets just, just, just went off. James Harden had 18 off the bench. He still dribbles above his head, which is illegal, but, you know. Yeah, there it's James we go. Harden, it's the NBA. There's really no rules in the NBA anymore. Yeah, yeah. We just so, um, when we want and when we don't want. We don't care. Yeah, so let's, so let's kind of talk about what this means here as we okay, kind of move this in mean, here. RJ? Because... We kind of went into last night thinking, well, Spurs, if they could get this win, of course they are in. We know that. They just need to win. But we were thinking, mm-hmm. okay, New Orleans needs to lose. That definitely helps the Spurs. But, David, all of a sudden, the Sacramento Kings have come out of nowhere. Where and they, they are still in the mix. <laughs> yeah. Well, I <laughs> they tell you snuck up on us. They've won six out of their last seven. That's God. where, they, you know, the loss mm-hmm. was to the Spurs. And yeah. that's when we thought when the Spurs beat the Kings, like, well, that takes care of the Kings. They're done. Well, no. <laughs> They're right back in the mix. <laughs> And matter of fact, they're two games behind the Spurs. The Spurs need one win or a Kings loss. Here we go again. Mm-hmm. Because if they tie, though, at the end, the Spurs do have the tiebreak. Yes. But yeah. the Spurs can't lose and the Kings can't win the rest. So, Basically, they, yeah, that's, that's the best way to put it. If the Spurs yeah. lose the rest of their games, three games left, and the Kings win out, the Kings would get that last play in berth. So, so uh, here, here's here's the problem so, yeah, for everybody. It's definitely still, uh, still a little yeah. bit of a hairy situation. The Spurs have the Knicks tonight. The Knicks are still battling the heat for that fifth playoff spot in the East. Mm-hmm. And then they have Phoenix on Saturday and Sunday. So there's a matchup for the Knicks. Sacramento has Memphis tonight. Go Grizzlies. <laughs> yeah. And then they have <laughs> Memphis great. again tomorrow night. And then they have Utah on Sunday. Mm-hmm. Utah is still battling Phoenix for the top spot in the West. So everybody still has something to play for. And, of course, the Suns for. are going to be here yeah. in San Antonio for their last That's two games. So. so we may not find out till Sunday afternoon, which is probably the worst-case scenario because even if the Spurs get in, it's going to be a quick turnaround. Yeah. And they've been and talking about rest. The easiest yeah. way to get in the playoffs is just beat the Knicks tonight. And then you get your yes. rest this weekend. You make it sound so first. easy. Do it for Stephanie. Do it for Stephanie. Just please. Please, please. please yeah. do it for Steph. Yes, that would be nice. Please. Please do it for Steph. Yeah, so uh, Spurs take on the Knicks tonight, and we will wait to see what happens there. We also had some other big news, David. Pro Football we got some scheduling. Powered by Davis Law Firm. Oh, yes. How about oh, yeah. those Cowboys? That's Dak Prescott be will be back. They got Heck some... of a season opener yeah, for the yes. entire league. That's the, yeah, this, actually, they put together a pretty good schedule. The yeah, entire league put together mm-hmm. a pretty good schedule. And this is, can you get better than this? The Cowboys kicking off the season on Thursday night football? against the defending champs. Can you get better than that? And apparently Tom Brady has already started trolling the Cowboys online. <laughs> he did. Yeah, he what? tweeted, he tweeted, oh wait, can't wait to take on America's team <laughs> for the opener. Well, maybe so he really Tom meant Brady it. taking some shots, yeah. <laughs> maybe he really um, meant it. <laughs> I, that's true. I No, I, you got to imagine that Tom Brady is definitely going to be up for this one. Of course, <laughs> it's the return of Dak taking on that Bucks defense. Yeah. But David, the, the Cowboys schedule five primetime games, so it's definitely loaded a lot of, a lot of big games. Five Primetime, they open up with two on the road. They start they start against Tampa Bay and then they go to do uh and then they go to I was gonna say San Diego. They go to LA. LA. David, take a step to your right. There you go. Cousin, yeah. you're cutting yourself off. Well, right? you don't really okay. want to you don't need to see me. <laughs> you can hear Yes, we do. Yeah, Get nah, back you, in there. <laughs> hearing me is bad enough. See, that's double trouble. Um so they open up with two on the road and then they come home for three in a row and they yeah. finish the season. Get this, they finish the season in Philadelphia. Why do they always finish the season either in New York or in Philly? Interesting. That, it's mm. the NFL Seems knows like what they're doing. Um, also, it, at Kansas City this year, so they will have Ooh, we will yeah. have a uh, Dak versus a Patrick Mahomes matchup l- late in the season. I, I also like that. that Houston's opening against the new look Jacksonville Jaguars. Oh boy, Jaguars. the Texans. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That, well, uh, Trevor like Lawrence, a rookie, a, a rookie quarterback, they're going up against. Yeah, and who's rookie, even going to be who's going to be the Texans quarterback? It could quarterback. be two rookies no going idea. against each other in that yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. a rookie NFL Stanford. coach on the yeah. sideline. Yeah. So, there you go. So. Um, interesting matchup there at Arizona. Uh, taking on J.J. Watt and uh, DeAndre Hopkins. Oh, so that's, that's the right. first time that they'll be playing. But not much to talk about when it comes to the Texans. Not, Good luck, not, Texans. Not right now. So. <laughs> and, oh, by the way, Thanksgiving Day. The Cowboys always play on Thanksgiving Day. They'll uh-huh. be hosting the Las Vegas mm. Raiders. There we go. Las Vegas Raiders. Right. Right. So. Very good team. Can't wait. Thank right, you, guys. So go Spurs, go. Please. Yes. Please. Please. More <laughs> Nothing would please. please us more than to be able to come in here tomorrow morning and talk about a Spurs win and they made the yes. playoffs. For Stephanie's sake, for all please. our sakes. Yes. Please. Oh. David Archie, thank you guys. Please. Right now, 941, about 65 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. A Southside ISD teacher hoping his classes will help students find their passion. Max Massey will introduce us to John Ross Hendricks after the break. 
Students around the country have dealt with many obstacles amid the pandemic. It's taken special teachers to go above and beyond to, at, to motiv motivate and educate. In today's Teacher Spotlight, Max Massey introduces us to John Ross Hendricks, a teacher at a middle school at Southside ISD. So you're changing to something you like or changing to I studied journalism in university, so I have a background in um, a few years of work working for newspapers. I worked as a yearbook photographer and on the staffs uh, when I was in high school. And then I was an ESL teacher in South Korea for six and a half years. You heard that correctly. John Ross Hendricks came to Southside ISD from South Korea. I grew up in Hawaii and lived in Korea for such a long time, so I'm very used to like Asian ideals and uh, communities so it's been very different but good so when they're reading the newspaper and now here in san antonio he teaches several subjects whether it's esl journalism the yearbook or the magazine mr hendrick wants to incorporate teamwork and passion you're almost there you i had a lot of it. crazy teachers when i was growing up and they all like had a lot of energy and it made me remember what they taught me so i kind of carry that over to my own Classroom. I think one of the things that uh, makes Mr. Hendrick really inspirational is just the energy that he brings. Um, he always has a very infective energy. Um, he is extremely positive, uh, works really well with all our students. What would you do? He works so oh, well with the students, he even started a periodical. It's a lot of work and it's a lot of planning and that's something that I really think students do need to know like how to plan out in the future. How has it changed till now? But when his students leave for the day, leave for the year or leave for okay, high so school, he does have a specific goal in mind. Now? I hope they figure out something that Is they're that interested in and they like, because that's, I think, the most important thing in school is trying to figure out where do you want to go? Are you using the Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. Good job down there. Uh, we believe it's Julius L. Matthew Middle School on Red Forest Lane at Southside ISD. Yeah, how inspiring. Um, you know, I was going to say good job to John Ross Hendricks. Uh, it's great that he even remembers his own teachers and he wants to do the same for his students. And that really motivates everyone to, to get going. So thank you again. That story kind of writes itself from South Korea to the South Side. Right? I know, that's crazy. Well, uh, Katie Blake is back now to talk uh, one day closer to the weekend. And uh, Katie, you promised an update on the uh, track drought monitor. Yes, uh, this changed drastically a couple of weeks ago after the uh, rain that started back in late April. Today's change is not so drastic. So here's last week's drought monitor. As I click forward to today's really not a whole lot of change, some slight improvement here or there, but we still have some of our southwestern most counties, LaSalle County, Dimmick County, uh, and even southern portion of Maverick County that are still in either extreme or severe drought. So we'll take a little bit more rain. It's also fairly dry up into the hill country uh, where we have some moderate drought there all the way up through Bandera. Uh, Kerrville and Fredericksburg as well. So we'll take a little bit more rain. Here's what we're looking at as far as rainfall goes over the next seven days. So this will be the next week. This will start to add up on Saturday this coming weekend. It looks like a widespread one to two inches of rain will be possible, but we could have some totals starting to creep up closer to it looks like three inches of rain again over the next seven days. So some more beneficial rainfall is on the way. And again, that's going to start this weekend with some scattered showers and storms both Saturday and Sunday. Big note about this weekend, something I want you to remember. This is not going to be a total washout, so it's not going to be raining all day Saturday and Sunday, but we will have some areas of showers and storms around both days and we'll dig into that more in just a couple of minutes. For today, it's really comfortable. Enjoy today. Enjoy tomorrow. It's going to be pretty pleasant out there. 67 in Catula. We've got upper 50s for our temperatures in the hill country. Winds are out of the northeast. They'll be about 5 to 15 miles per hour today, so not overly windy, but a little breeze here or there, and it's that wind direction that will help to keep our humidity on the lower side today as well. We're getting our visible satellite picture in. Uh, plenty of sunshine down to the south of Bear County through Pleasanton, out of Scosa County, down to Catula all the way over to the I-37 corridor. Everyone else sitting under a fair amount of cloud cover, and this cloud cover is going to really filter in and out at times today. I do expect we'll see some more sunshine as we head into the afternoon, but we'll hold on to some clouds all through the day today. Uh, pretty quiet across Texas aside from that cloud cover. Things will stay quiet today and tomorrow, so continuing to be rain-free as we wrap up the work and school week. But by Saturday, 
The flow in the mid and upper levels of the atmosphere is going to bring in some little pieces of rain making energy beginning Saturday, continuing into Sunday. So that's why we'll see scattered showers and storms become possible over the course of the weekend. But again, that rain will come and go. And things start to change a little bit early next week. On Monday, we've got this larger piece of rain making energy, a cutoff uh, low pressure system. That's going to start to move closer to us on Tuesday. This getting closer to us will provide a lot more lift and energy, and that's when we could start to see some more organized thunder storm activity opening the door to some severe weather potential early next week. So we'll have some scattered rain around this weekend, but we're not overly concerned about any severe weather that will start to kick in early next week. And as we get closer to early next week, we'll be able to pick out specific severe weather threats for you uh, to keep you updated. That's coming early next week. Enjoy today. It's going to be comfortable highs mid to upper 70s with some clearing this afternoon, I expect, and mostly cloudy tomorrow with increasing humidity. Rain chances kick in this weekend, and it looks like they'll continue through the better part of next week. So more rain on the way, guys. We'll prepare for it. Thank you, Katie. Mm -hmm. About 10 till 10, and we're at 63 degrees. And coming up after the break, meet Zuko, HEV's newest furry partner, plus how he scored that gig next. <sighs> good morning. Well, good morning. Coming up on live, Chris Rock you know talks about his new movie, Spiral. Oh, we're going to work out with trainer Jillian Michaels as well, because we need to. See you on live. New reports show that the number of reported military sexual assaults has increased, but only slightly. Coming up at noon, a breakdown of the numbers. Losing a child is every parent's worst nightmare, one that sadly came true for a San Antonio family after their daughter was diagnosed with a brain tumor. Tomorrow on GMSA at 9, how they're using their experiences to help other families and children battle brain cancer. Max Massing introduces Gabriella's Smile Foundation tomorrow at 9. Really pleasant out there today with lower humidity. You'll start to notice a bit more humidity in the air, especially by the end of the day tomorrow. But rain chances will hold off until the weekend. A couple of strong storms, but mainly some pockets of heavy rain through the weekend. Not a total washout, but there will be rain around early next week. That's when we could see an increased potential for some severe thunderstorms. And of course, we'll keep you updated. Thank you very much, Katie. If you're a frequent customer of the uh, HEB Plus out at Loop 1604 at Petranco, be on the lookout for Zuko. That's right. He's a very special partner there. I hope we see. Yes, we have his Aww. picture. I love this. He's wearing the little name tag and everything. So yeah, this location at, like Mark said, Loop 1604 and Pentrico Road has been frequented by a cat who started visiting the grocery store sometime in 2020. Store manager Serena Hernandez told my SA that Zuko showed up about six months ago near the garden center. So according to an HEB spokesperson, uh, the female feline has been named Zuko by the HEB part who adopted her, and that was Abraham. Abraham, mm -hmm. Zuko's new owner, said he named her after the, a character in Avatar, The Last Airbender, because she bears resemblance to the character in the show who has an eye patch. Okay. Yeah. So Zuko likes to lounge around the Texas backyard department outside the store and recently gave birth to four kittens. Aww. And now Zuko has a name tag. Yeah, how cute. You guys have a great day.